Buffalo, New York, June 27, 1967, riots break out. The black community, one-third of whom are on welfare, can't wait any longer. We want to do what is right while we want to contain this and not let it get out of hand. I want to make it crystal clear that as mayor, and I know you agree with me, that we will not tolerate a violation of the law. We will not tolerate criminal activity. We will not tolerate looting and pillaging. And we will do everything we can to bring those persons to justice. They will be arrested and brought into court, and the law will have to take its course. After four nights of violence and $100,000 damage, the mayor promises to do something about employment opportunities within a week, if they will cool off. We were only in there for about a month and a half when Buffalo blew. We weren't even organized. And even our critics, the Buffalo Press, editorialized uh, that they were grateful for Bill being in there, that it would have been a lot worse. I want to comment about the outside agitators that the mayor claims is coming into Buffalo to create the disorder. Number one, chronic unemployment of adults and teenagers. Number two, inferior education of 24,000 Negro children in the Buffalo public school system. Number three, your slum lords and your slum merchants that flee to the suburbs with our hard-earned cash and overcharge us for everything in the ghetto. Number four, police brutality. Some of our policemen don't know how to treat Negroes. They treat them like they're animals and talk to them like they're animals. And these are human beings. <coughs> Number five, the lack of recreation facilities. There's one swimming pool to every 50,000 Negroes, and there are 100,000 Negroes in the city of Buffalo. Number five, we're sick and tired of this Uncle Tom leadership. That's why we have Bill here. The uh, Buffalo Area Council of Churches, these are the Protestant churches, asked us to come in and put up the money. Our, after we told them what the budget cost would be, our response was, you do not have any right to invite us into the black ghettos. We are not a colonial power. You have no right to speak for them. Until the black community itself invites us in, we will not move. The Buffalo organization Build had been formed in late 1966. Alinsky sent in Dick Harmon as staff director. At its founding convention, Build had named employment a top priority. One week after the riots, Build is off to see the mayor. Uh, may I have your attention, please? Attention, please. I hope that you all have your briefing sheets in front of you and that you have read them very carefully. I'll just go over it uh, here just so that we're sure. Number one, we're going, to, we're going to the mayor's office and then to the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I'm Reverend Fletcher Bryan, who will be the spokesman. Now, we don't want to go down in a rowdy, unmannerly way. We want to move quickly and in numbers with discipline. Show them that we can come with the kind of dignity that we expect from them. Ladies and gentlemen, if we might begin the leadership is here at the top of the steps to let us gather in an orderly manner at this point and move to the mayor's office. I would like to make you more comfortable, but I didn't expect so many persons. However, is Mr. Harmon here? Mr. Harmon yes, is here. Mr. Harmon is here. All right. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to say initially that our meeting this afternoon is with you that we would ask that any other persons invited here, that their role be strictly observant. If it's understandable. All right. And let's understand this now. Uh, how many persons are going to speak? You can well I, I am the spokesman. You are the one spokesman, spokesman All right. for the organization. A week ago, you met with civic <coughs> and industrial leaders and made a specific request 
in regard to jobs in the face of a crisis in job inequities in the Negro community. We would like to know what is the response of this plea that you made a week ago. Is Mr. Light here of the Chamber of Commerce? Mr. Light? I asked Mr. Light to be here, and he might be on his way. And, sir, we would insist that if Mr. Light arrives, that his role would be that of a, as an observer also. We ask well, to I meet think with that you, you're, being, you're asking me what that response is, and my response will depend upon information that I receive from the Chamber of Commerce. And Mr. Light has been the, 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 the person who has been contacting the various industrialists and business people. We requested an opportunity to meet with the Chamber of Commerce and Mr. Light. This was denied to Bill Organization, representing 143 black organizations in our community. So we feel that we're here to talk with you today. I see. If Mr. Light wants to meet us, he still has the opportunity at this moment to honor the invitation at now, 1 o'clock at the chamber. Now, now, let me answer your question. As of yesterday afternoon, late afternoon, my information and my contact with Mr. Light, who was handling the matter for, who was the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce, was that some 916 jobs appear to be available. That includes the 600 jobs that the county is making available. That is not the end of it. Uh, about 2,000, as I understand it, about 2,000 letters have been sent to the various business and industrial leaders in this area. And plans are underway to uh, uh, find out just how many jobs eventually will be available. But I can tell you this, that the chamber is concerned, that efforts are being made, and that we're all trying, we're all trying to solve some of these problems. But then you're saying that they have not delivered at this point. And the second point I'd like no, to raise... No, you're saying it. I'm not saying it. I am not saying they haven't delivered. You are apparently ignoring my answer when I tell you that in my conversation with Mr. Light, he mentions a figure of 916, but more effort is being made. They just haven't stopped. They're still contacting the business and industrial leaders. Uh, are these jobs of a temporary or permanent nature? I haven't got the full specifics on them. Some of them will be permanent, some will be temporary, but efforts are being made. Well, let me at this time, Mr. Mayor, make crystal clear Bill's position on this job matter. First of all, we're not interested in lollipop uh, temporary job opportunities. Now, you stated to the news media last week that we ought to be concerned about the causes, the root of the problem. We all recognize that the root of the problem lies in employment, permanent employment. And this is a concern of bill organization. Because you see, we have to raise the question, what is going to happen to these young people at the end of the summer? What is going to happen to the young Negroes that, that graduate from high school? What is going to happen to the 15% unemployment in our ghetto areas? Bill's position is that we are concerned about permanent jobs. 3,500 permanent jobs with a take-home pay of $75 with a policy of hire now and train later. But I point out to you again that the solution of this problem rests with the business and industrial leaders of this area not with me. I, I feel that we're being honest with you at this point. We are making you aware of our concern. All right, and it seems to me this is the place to begin. Reverend, now, let me say this first to you. You asked me what the response had been up to a point. And I told you that while I have been in contact with the chamber, in person, and on the phone, that as far as getting into specifics and what has been done up to this moment, that I did not have those specifics. I could talk in generic terms. Now, you said that you didn't want anyone else to talk. Now, I ask you to reconsider that and to point out to you that Mr. Chuck Light of the Chamber of Commerce, who has been handling this phase of it, is here. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. We appreciate your time. 
but we will not accept these well, arrangements. May I ask you one question then? Just one question. Mr. Light, are you in the chamber willing to meet with Bill? As I pointed out to uh, Mr. Harmon yesterday, uh, we would be glad to, he knows we've already had one meeting with him. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a, a room large enough at the chamber. There's plenty of space outside and around the city, so uh, don't let this be your concern. Will you honor our meeting then? Well, you know, you know I will. As I well, will. this isn't, uh, what I, I think, gentlemen, that uh, certainly, uh, Mr. Mayor, we uh, appreciate the hearing at this time, and we have stated our purpose in coming, and you have responded accordingly. And thank we thank you very much. Thank you very much. The door is always open, and we'll keep talking until we solve the problem. To an organizer watching it, the following things come through to me in a hurry which uh, I think might escape uh, just the, the general observer. One, the mayor immediately asks for uh, Harmon, my organizer, who's white. He feels more at home talking to a white organizer right away. Uh, he doesn't get that, so he gets a little flustered on it. Suddenly he finds himself with a, a black spokesman that he doesn't know. Uh, second, uh, that spokesman is following out a very definite tactic. He knows when he goes into a mayor's office that the mayor's tactics first are to look for more than one spokesman. Because if you have three or four spokesmen and you can get them talking between themselves or even shooting questions at them, the one thing the mayor wants to do, he's got a one-hour appointment, is to use up as much of that time and talk. So he doesn't have to make any commitments. So he can say, well, gentlemen, it was very nice to you all coming in here, and of course we weren't able to cover all the ground. I'd like to think about it, and uh, maybe we'll get together again. You know, don't call me, I'll call you. <clears throat> so in order to avoid this situation, one spokesman is always selected, and he is told that he's got to have a specific question and stay with it. Never let the mayor get off of it. And of course, one thing you also noticed was that no one from the group broke in on the spokesman. This is what is meant by discipline, and this is what you get as part of an organization. You just get a whole demonstration group coming in. Everybody wants to talk, and uh, nothing occurs there. The other thing is, you see, the Chamber of Commerce guy had tried to avoid meeting with Bill because he knew that by meeting with Bill, whether he said he recognized them or he didn't, once he met with them, that, that was an act of recognition. So the only thing that could really come out of the mayor's meeting was by getting the Chamber of Commerce guy and knowing that no mayor wants to carry the responsibility himself. You were using that meeting as a, as a, as a force to compel the Chamber of Commerce guy to meet with Bill whether he wanted to or not. But the mayor saying, of course he's going to meet with you. What was the Chamber of Commerce guy going to say? Well, Mr. Mayor, you don't understand the complications on this if I meet with them, blah, blah, blah. So he had to meet. Now, it seems to me the first vital and most important thing is that you recognize us as a vital link in the Negro community. I understand you're one of several civic and uh, Negro rights organizations in the community. The thing that disturbs me is that last uh, Friday there was a meeting at the YMCA called by all of the Negro civil rights groups in the area. We attended that meeting with other representatives of the community, and I understood that every responsible Negro civil rights group was there. And it was agreed at that meeting that the CAO, which is the Community Action Organization, certainly truly representative of the community, would be the coordinating agency for all jobs that were produced from every source. This was the county, this was the state, this was the federal government, this was the business community. And this we is are doing it as we represent the right. people, sir. We represent the people. Now, whoever gave you this information is beyond me, but we represent the people in the community at this point. We're here to but make our demand. I'm meeting. not, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in, in entering any discussion of the NAACP, core, urban, all these groups. God bless them at this point. All they can do, but we, we are interested in permanent jobs. Fine. 3,500,000 within a month. Uh, if you don't trust us at this point. Oh, we trust you. And you don't really feel that we have the common. I think we have placed this here before you. We have asked for the right as representatives to have a role in the screening and recruitment. 
and that if you're concerned, if you're concerned with this, Mr. Lighton, the people and so forth, oh. then... We've been involved in this, as you know, since 1964. You know that? Well, I, we, we're aware. We well, read the newspapers and other things, but we're concerned yeah. about permanent How jobs. How many people do you think we've placed permanently so far? 450 persons well, you're, have you're been placed just, permanently. Um, 150 have come off the welfare rolls. Did you know that? Did you know that? No, I asked you a question. Did you well, know that? I, this is I'm our involvement. This is the interest that we're in, that we have in this area. But what, what about the jobs you have available now? These 900 as, come as, off. As, as Are agreed, these permanent jobs? As agreed, they've all been channeled through the CAO as agreed last Friday in the meeting with all at the YMCA. You're going to ignore an organization representing the people, huh? Are, are you saying to us? Aren't you cooperating with the CAO? Well, aren't you cooperating? I mean, we are. I, look, I'm not are? here no, to present any demand. Sure, we cooperate all the organizations. But here again, I'm here in behalf of Bill Organization, we'll and I've raised the question. I don't want cooperating with Bill. You will accept us then as a recruiting and screening for jobs you have to offer. For for uh, your percentage of the jobs that we have to offer, sure. Yeah, what, what are you, you cutting the pie on? <laughs> what, 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 what jobs do you have off at this point? And how are you cutting the pie? I mean, if you, what do you well, want to say? Uh, I suggest that you contact CAO. The CAO, the Community Action Organization, the official federally recognized organization, no, is sir. screening and handling all of the job opportunities says that we've who? been able to develop. Says who? Says, says the power structure. We represent the people. What power structure now? Uh, this was agreed by the, the civil rights yeah, organizations, the the, not the, the way business way. community. Huh? That's what I'm saying. And uh, as, I, as I've said uh, four or five times in our discussions, we'll be glad to work with you along with the others as we are, as we have already done. Uh, uh, as what do you mean, week, uh, work with us? Well, is, is not this an example of cooperation, of listening to what, you, uh, what you're suggesting? If I might have your attention a moment, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about the process and some of the things that we saw happen. First of all, I think the thing that we observed today was the beautiful execution of power. Now, you can send one or two folk down there to speak for Negroes. You can send a so-called leader down to speak for Negro people. But when Negro people turn out in numbers and demand their rights, then this is power. I don't know whether you noticed the knees of the mayor shaking and how shaky the Chamber of Commerce president was. So the first thing we need to look at is power. When we get together and do things and demand, then we are heard. The second thing I think that we attain is that they recognize that Bill is a, a voice that has to be respected in the Negro community. And what came out of it? was the recognition by the mayor, by the Chamber of Commerce, and by the powers that be, that Bill was the ma massive representative group organization of the black ghetto, that they could not hide behind the facade of the poverty program. This has been a strange irony, for the poverty program operations have been part of the establishment used as a shield by them, where they've gotten all their little favorite go-alongers, Uncle Tom's and so forth, into poverty program jobs and have said, well, we're dealing with the poor, we're dealing with the people, we're dealing with the poverty program. This is one thing in terms of tactics. You sit with a political leader and you say, this is the question, do you recognize us or don't you? And he gets off and says, well, blah, 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 blah. You don't hear him. Do you recognize us or don't you? Now, you saw this going on with the spokesman who kept repeating himself. But that's what, what was the basis on the repetition. The opposition always tries to get away from this issue by saying, well, after all, there are other groups. There's, o there's the War on Poverty, the OEO group. There's the this group, that group, and this group. Now here, the spokesman also, very carefully trained, he was, he was really, he actually was an IEF staff man, uh, who knew that well, what they were baiting for was that he should make some uh, remark about, well, look, the Urban League and the NAACP and these other organizations don't count. 
We represent 150 organizations. They don't have any rank and file membership and so forth. Well, this immediately starts a war back there between the other organizations, and this is what the establishment would like to see happen. That's the reason why he kept saying, uh, look, the NAACP, the Urban League, and so forth, God bless them, et cetera. We are here representing all these organizations. Do you or do you not recognize us? Now, all through this, too, uh, there was a, a real awareness that the establishment was not going, going to deliver anything. Actually, you remember the number of jobs, 960 jobs and all that stuff? Well, the actual number of jobs that came out of that was uh, from the Chamber of Commerce, 27 jobs. From the county, about 300, uh, about 300, let's see, you know, 300 jobs, and they're all temporary jobs and poverty program jobs. You see, the threat was over, the violence was over. And now they were just trying to uh, just uh, get out of the situation. There were a whole series of areas that they were moving in on as well as the jobs things. In the same week, BUILD launches its own attack on employment inequities. Its target is Niagara Mohawk, a public utility. Recognition of BUILD is again the issue as the number of Niagara Mohawk jobs possible in the Buffalo area is not great. One minute. BUILD's president, Reverend Frank Emanuel. Are you ready, Reverend? Yes, ready. Are you fellas ready? Of course, is that rolling? Rolling. Okay, we're rolling. Good start. Go. BUILD is called today for a top-level meeting with Niagara Mohawk to discuss the company's policy toward hiring Negroes. We have asked for a meeting this week with James A. O'Neill, Administrative Vice President for the Western Division of Niagara Mohawk. Now listen, do you, do you feel your, your leadership understands what kind of battle you're going into? You know, in Rochester... A Linsky staff man in neighboring Rochester, Ed Chambers is in town to consult with Dick Harmon on tactics as Harmon is still a bit green. A year and a half, uh, you know, before we dug in on him. Uh, uh, but by this time, in view of other battles, particularly on urban renewal, uh, our leadership realized that they were launching a major campaign that was going to take a year, possibly a year and a half. They realized that it wasn't the kind of thing where there's going to be a quick, easy victory. That the, the power situation they had lined up against them uh, was uh, of the kind that uh, very sophisticated, very clever. So it's important, I think, because you're young and you're going into this thing after about six months, that they realize that the tactics and the strategies aren't the kind to use for, uh, you know, sheet hangs. Yeah. And it isn't simply, they aren't as easy as uh, running down and, uh, and putting the mayor on the spot. We've got a little different leverage because these guys are a legal monopoly, you know, regulated by the state. Yeah. Public Service Commission. Yeah. They operate in northern PA which will give us some leverage for the feds. The Buffalo Negro community has no alternative but to pay our money for electricity to Niagara Mohawk because it is a legal monopoly. Niagara Mohawk's willingness to permit Lily White construction unions to freeze out Negro workers is typical of the area's construction industry. Your main thing now is to get into, uh, get into a confrontation with the top management. You well know they're going to try to uh, shift you off onto uh, PR. PR. Industrial right. You have to wait till you get O'Neill. Yeah. Uh, these other guys uh, will talk us to death, and pretty soon it will be the cold of December. And when we've all worked out something, then they'll say, well, we got to go back. we got to go back and uh, talk to the uh, board of directors. Their experience has been withstand it for a week, two days, and they go away. There isn't, they've never ran up against a persistent, mass-based organization right. that picks away at them day in and day out. Yeah. Now you've got the visible construction site to, to pinpoint it on, but you're talking about much more than just a few jobs in that construction site. You go after Niagara Mohawk, you're going after the, the core of the, of the city. Yeah. Bill takes this opportunity, this occasion, not only to serve notice on Niagara Mohawk, 
but to serve notice on the city, the county, the state and federal governments that we will take appropriate measures to, uh, to hold up construction of the proposed county building, the proposed state office building, the proposed Federal General Services Administration building, and the proposed state university buildings until there are Negroes employed in every skilled category on every job financed by public funds in the Buffalo area. I remember, this is something the, uh, the senators are very concerned about. Well, Kennedy should uh, buy this issue. He's talking about getting industry into the ghettos, all right? This is a... Uh, and it's, uh, he's, he's got influence through uh, the fact that it's a public uh, monopoly. Right. Build has a, uh, has a good many other issues. Every organization that we build is built on a multi-issued uh, basis. Uh, the worst thing you can do, and one of the reasons why some of the civil rights or a large part of the civil rights movement went dead, is to organize around a single issue. It becomes a straitjacket to any organization. In the first place, you take a single issue and you literally lock out a large part of potential membership who, are, who may be sympathetic to the issue, but in terms of their hierarchy of concerns, if I can use that phrase, there are other things they're more interested in than that. That's the kind of thing they're willing to come to one meeting every two months, sign a petition, give you a couple of bucks. But there's something else that they're more concerned with. Now, in an organization, you always get the number one concerns of a whole group of people across the board, and then uh, they become the program, and this is, the, this is one of the basic themes in building a mass organization on it. Once they establish themselves by recognition, the mayor and so forth down the line, Bill was able to take that public recognition and use it against the retail merchants, against the supermarkets, and other sectors of the economic life, life of Buffalo to score heavily with a great many jobs. This is when the victory came. In still another attack on black unemployment this same week, members of Bill's job committee investigate hiring and promotion practices of individual merchants in the downtown area, where Negroes spend approximately $20 million each year. In the first place, they're going to be hostile to you. They don't know what you're there for, and they may be afraid that you're after his job. And people are funny when you talk to them about things like that. Now, how you're going to get in to do this, this is what we better decide. Not how many places we can go, but how many we can effectively get the information from that we want. And this is going to be a job. I found it helpful to ask for the executive, non-white, though. And I, I, these are uh, white businesses. I, you might very well get better answers out of the workers. I, Iroquois was very open with me. Simon, Simon Pure wouldn't even let me into his office. Schmidt's Metals. Pepsi-Cola. Does anyone so know where they move? Very good. Yeah. That's where Pepsi-Cola runs. They got their own dealerships. Uh, how about the Carling's distributors? Well, Mayo is the only one at Carling Distributors on the, in our zone, but now we got a few more at Carling, at Black Label, liver and beer. For truck drivers, now that's the only problem we got. It's about the truck drivers, deliverers, you know? We ain't got too many. I don't think we got over two. But as far as uh, uh, maintenance work inside, they got, they got colored women working evenings, cleaning up. My cousin, she was working there. <coughs> but what about it, the money jobs? About the money jobs? I think uh, you got to get on air cores. I think you got to just see us, just check them out. Salesmanship. Yeah, salesmanship. You got to you got to reach a little bit. That's right. And you've got to you got you got to be able to step up to your part of the responsibility at the same time that you're making the demands. And you've got to keep this in mind. Well, okay, well, no, right. you've got to, to make these demands, but uh, you know, you, you incur a little bit of responsibility at the same time. If each team can get the two places, get well, you may have a bit of a problem, maybe a bit more of a problem than we've anticipated in some instances. I think now we can, uh... Okay, does everybody know who belongs to whom? No, call them off. Uh, oh. team one. <laughs> the basic thing in, uh, in this whole organizational operation is to constantly increase the area of participation because as far as just going ahead and uh, 
setting up an organization in which individuals become, uh, relatively speaking, anonymous supporters uh, that through their organization get more increased benefits, material benefits. Uh, basically, you're not uh, pushing too much of the democratic process. I don't want to start using cliches like the dignity of the individual or the potentials of the individual and stuff like that. But unless you have the kind of climate and the kind of operation where people begin to develop as people, I think we're losing the main reason for even for any system, including the democratic system. I could pretend to be the white employer. You know, and you might want to go through your um, exactly what you'd be saying to me and my responses and how you'd react to my responses so you wouldn't have to take it all cold tomorrow. You know, you might want to do this right now. You know, there's kind of a knock on my door. <laughs> Well, you're fine. Well, I probably won't be the one to survive. Well, in this instance, you are the one. Oh, you put me on the spot, man. Let's see. Well, you know, I'm not going to be the one to survive. You fill out, you know, if they would let you, you fill out an application. And, um, I don't know how would I go about this, you know, just, uh, go in and ask, you know, just say, I'm here to see. Some information. Get some, get some information about unemployment. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, that's exactly, exactly it. Um, I'd say I'm here to uh, see about your unemployment. Yeah, I mean, your employment. I would like a job or something. You know, I like a job. And I'm eager to work if you would have me, you know, something like this. Well, we'd be happy to consider this. Now, I've heard that Bill is a group of uh, Negroes that are pushing some white people around, uh, some white business people around. So, so we're just trying to equalize people, you know, make them equal. We're not trying to push anybody around or make it tough for anybody. We just want more jobs for some people, that's all. Yeah. You're coming on real strong. Uh, and Man, that's I'm good. nervous. No, <laughs> uh, the, um, uh, it's good that we're going through this now rather than um, tomorrow. rather than tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so you would be hunting around for the type of man who would be trained yeah. then for this particular job. And so you're you're kind of trying to find out from our firm, from Story Stony Point distributors, you know what our job breakdown is along those lines. Well, um, let's say I'm going to be nasty, Joe, and I'm not going to. Uh, you know, I'm not going to give you that information. I figure it's my business, and um, you're not from the government, and you got no legal arm behind you. Um, and I, I just don't want to deal with that damn form. You know, that you're giving I can't me. force it out of you, or nothing like that. So I guess we we'll have to take other means. But I, I'm not going to force it out of you. I'm not going to use violence on you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Good day. Well, I know what you're talking about. You're you're starting to say, well, by golly, you. you you guys might throw a picket up around my place, mm -hmm. and uh, I might think twice about not paying any attention to this form of yours. Mm -hmm. And that's that's all part of the way the world runs right now. This is what I, you know, a lot of fellas have got to learn. You know, if they go to a place, you know, say the guy says, well, I'm not going to fill it out the hell with it. And well, we will do this, you know. <laughs> well, no, one said, that. no one has said that before, you see? Lots of other people have said, you know, you do this or we'll do that. But they haven't been black people. And the other co the companies have, have jumped too. And this is, you're, you're working and dealing like, um, like everybody else has been doing it for years. Put the pressure on but put it in a different sense than violence. Yeah, in a different <laughs> sense than violence. Like it or not, this world is one that is, you, you respond to pressure. And the white community's been putting on their own pressure, kind of green power, mm -hmm. dollar power, for a long time. Uh, you know, hire their own sons, do this and that. Yeah. What you were witnessing in that picture and, the, and helping to train him. And you noticed that he kept sort of responding with, well, I'll say this or I'll say that. We whites have done such an extraordinary job of uh, brainwashing on the blacks that many blacks do consider themselves second-class second citizens.
Ordinarily, for example, I go into a white low-income community, and on an oversimplified basis, the approach goes this way. We're equal to those outside. They look upon us as a, as a colony. We're getting shafted out of our legitimate rights. We're going to organize, we're going to get power, and we're going to fight it our way out. Now, let's roll, and you're off. In a black community, we have to spend the first four or five months in action programs convincing the blacks that they are, in fact, equal to the whites outside before we reach what, what is a primary stage in the white community. The riots have brought a lot of uh, people at least talking, yeah. not a great deal other than that. It's been a lot of great talk, but even before last week, we didn't even have a talk. So I don't mean to condone violence, but I would say it's not all bad. No, it's not all bad because you get you get people to thinking, oh, what, do, what do these people want, you know? Why? Why did they do this, you know? And they'll start thinking, you know, and maybe they want something better out of life than this. Yeah. Before Build came, there was no black pressure. Uh, and that's, that's, that's part of the, uh, the fabric of, of our country right now. And it's kind of pressure against pressure. And that's the way people do business. That's the way this country's been doing business up to now. So Build has that, that to offer.